Peggy, 18. Hmm. What do I want to say with this story? Hello? Yeah? What do you want to say with this story? What do you think? What do you, what do you think about this story? I think running away is what I want to say with this. Uh, you know, a change is possible. Fuck me, man. I could see it in everybody's eyes that they were just like, we're not gonna make it. And then everyone's still treating it like, hmm, you know what? We'll just see, and I'm like, no, like, I, in my mind, I get it. I see what you guys are telling me. I'm not gonna let myself believe we're gonna make the date now. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. the gaming industry with its epic storytelling, jaw-dropping action sequences, not to mention a quick and brutal lesson on Greek mythology. Ares! Burn the spirit! Burn it to the ground! We're talking about one of the most iconic characters in the history of video games. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's an ass-kicking game. <laughs> it is. So I don't know how many, what the demographic is of, of women that play these games as opposed to men. I'm, I'm guessing that the ratio is probably like nine to one. You, I bring the destruction of Olympus. Ladies and gentlemen, the creative directors of the God of War franchise. <laughs> what exactly does a game director do? Pure carnage from start to finish. Very early on, he or she has to be able to play the game from beginning to end in their head. Grabbing people and throwing people around, and like you get that sense of empowerment, you know, like nothing can stop you. Especially on the first God of War, when nobody, with the exception of a couple of us, had any idea what it was. So to me, a God of War game is about the action, it's about the rage. I was a god in the beginning, and then I was put down, and then I came back and destroyed everybody. On God of War 2, he expanded the story of Kratos, deepening the saga and turning it into a legend. Please welcome Corey Barlog. A lot of the time, we have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of leaps that you make in this job where you're like, all right, look, I kind of know what I want, but sometimes you're discovering as you go. you guys become game directors? It's For just me, sort it was of just a that Corey quit. Thing. Yeah, no. I quit, so <laughs> I quit, so he quit. quit, so I got it. So really, all you gotta do is find somebody to quit. I pledged an oath in blood. God of War won about a guy who puts everything aside for work, and he loses his wife, and he loses his kid. Pain is all I have left. Hello, Kratos. Few games embody the definition of epic quite like God of War, so it's disappointing that the release of Ascension brings with it a whiff of a series that's treading water rather than driving forward. So I guess killing people solves problems is not really going to go over so well. <laughs> Oh, where am I sitting? No, 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 Corey with an E is sitting here. Corey without an E isn't sitting at this table. Oh, that is embarrassing. That is embarrassing. I am an 80s television star. Uh, but that's all right. We'll let this one slide. Maybe. <laughs> For me, this was a very long journey. We were in, an, in a tough time within the studio, and there was a lot of emphasis uh, that we as a team were putting on rebooting this franchise and what does that mean. 
And there's a lot of risk just in that one sort of concept. Reboot is, as Corey and you guys know, it's not as easy as it sounds. Okay, first position, playback, action, and then cut, reset, we will do our thing, and then go back into first position, playback, action. Does anybody want to write that down for me? Because I feel like I'm going to mess it up. Before he came back to the studio, I could tell he was a completely different person. He had um, gotten married, uh, was a father, and he was telling a, a completely different story just you know, as Corey Barlog. Uh, legend or a myth or something like that? Uh, Shannon, where did you get this wonderful lawn turtle? I don't know. Did it did just you appear? Show up? Yeah. No, she's, you still haven't cracked the mystery of the, nobody, no. nobody no. came no. out? No one, no one, wow. no one claimed it. Somebody stuck it in my garden and it's just huh. been there. Do you know what that means? I don't. Appearance yeah, nice. of a turtle in your garden. You lie. I have no idea. I was trying, <laughs> trying to stall <laughs> to come up with something interesting. Name. When I came back to Santa Monica, <laughs> we were we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. I know that what we wanted to do was not going to just be make another God of War game. <laughs> Knowing that, we knew that same old Kratos, rage-filled, crazy guy, was not going to work. And I kind of started thinking about this idea that if Kratos ever got a second chance, you know, this idea of, like, when I had a kid, I felt like my perspective on everything changed. Hey, all right. Hi. Do you want to come over and see what Papa? Come on. We'll go over here. We'll go call action. Can you say action? Action. Action. See, he's learning. Success means the world to Santa Monica Studio. I mean, this is something that, hold on, my pocket's buzzing. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, You're sorry. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> it was Shannon's idea to go find Corey again and bring him back as one of the original vision holders of the whole world that was God of War and give him time to really try to come up with, how do we reinvent this franchise? How can we just make it not just bigger and, and better and the same, but bigger and better and different? After Ascension, they did this thing to check uh, well, how the audience felt about God of War, right? The overwhelming vibe was that they were done with Kratos. You know, Kratos either needed to go away or needed a fresh start. Kratos needs a fresh start. You know, if you see the picture, if you can see it all the way in the back, that face is exactly what people think of Kratos right now, which is just like, Aah! you know, like there's no like intelligent conversation like that. You just like rip your head off. Then how do you feel? Like, and you just rip your head off. Like there's, there's one dimension to this character which was awesome as the anti-hero of the first game, but it didn't really grow. We didn't go anywhere with it. First day back was at Penn Station in Santa Monica. Everybody was doing prototypes, they were doing concept art, and they had kind of a, a pitch for Internal 7, the other game. I was very excited, probably because I had been on God of War 1, 2, and 3, so I was ready for something new. And I was very excited that it was, it was going to be futuristic, they're going to have guns, we're going to do something completely different. Internal 7, they were in pre-production for probably close to 36 months. Shortly after that period, they needed to inherit the Ascension team and really put the pedal to the metal. This studio is the DNA of God of War. As we start to push this thing forward, you guys are focusing pretty much 100% on this other project that will be our new original IP. But yeah, the first time was getting everybody up there while well, they were still working on the other project. Uh, and I think it was a lot of people were wondering what we were doing because it was a small team. And it was just high vision, like, what are we going to do? And really kind of just throwing a bunch of stuff at the board. 
leadership had made some decisions around the growth of the studio and, and how we would remain competitive. And one of those decisions was turning ourselves into what we called a 1.5 team. And that would mean that you would have two larger IP development going on within the roof of Santa Monica Studio, and those teams would share resources back and forth. And the theme of the day is trying to keep quiet during the tour. Lots of, uh, lots of reverb in there. So we have a whole area of offices will come along here. Offices will be along this wall. Over on this side, we're going to have the focus test room right over here. Incubation team, we just walked through the, the new incubation area. We have full-fledged uh, recording studio set up. Green room for the talent that comes in to record for our games. And as you come this way, having a projection screen that will be able to come down. So we'll have our all hands. All hands in this space, again, similar to what we do in Studio A. Executive uh, boardroom for meetings. As you're winding, you can look over the, the railing. It's a, it's a really different perspective on the, the space as a whole. That's my guy. Everyone applaud Shannon for her great tour guide work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys all for coming. I think this is a crazy great opportunity. I'm sure all you guys are totally overwhelmed like I am with how incredibly large this place is, but I think it just shows that Sony has a really deep commitment to Santa Monica Studios, and we want this place to grow, and we want you guys to be someplace special. Opportunities like this don't come very often. I'm very honored to be here with you guys today in our new home with the team that is going to be the future of Sony Santa Monica. Cheers. You want me to talk about what it would be like if it failed? Well, well <laughs> I mean, yeah, just yeah. To, like it really where it comes from is yeah. what's at stake because it's like yeah. that's part of the business. You know, it is part of the business, and you know, I if if any franchise were to fail on you know on an epic scale, like just not deliver at all, of course there'd be ramifications. <laughs> Gaming here with IGN News. Layoffs unfortunately hit Sony Santa Monica Studio today. The Sony-owned exclusive developer, founded in 1999, is best known for its God of War games. The extent of the damage remains unclear, though there are indications that one of the projects the studio was working on has been canceled alongside this round of layoffs. Sony has provided the following statement to IGN. SCEA can confirm that we have completed a reduction in workforce at Santa Monica Studio. You know, I think it, uh, it ended up being a dream that died, literally, in that moment. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever do in development, is when you sink your heart and soul into something and you realize it's not coming together the way we wanted it to. We need to shift gears and restart. Um, that was kind of the abyss for that team. So that was, that was pretty devastating uh, in many ways. You know, one of the many big appeals of coming here was to work on a new IP on a small team. So I actually joined that in 17 when it was about 20 people. So that was a very, very difficult time uh, for me. So, yeah. <laughs> But for us, we kind of had our heads down. We were just like, okay, we had a timeline, and that timeline felt pretty good. That other game was going. We were kind of like, okay, cool. We'll kind of trail them, draft, know when we can get people on. Uh, and then when things were not working out, uh, and kind of the big sort of 
halt happened on the project, we had to suddenly say, we're about to get 110 people. And I had to figure out how to keep them busy and figure out now beyond just the concept of the game, but how are we gonna, what's the new pipeline? What's the engine? It was in a dire position, right? Because you're in that state where you don't have anything to keep people busy, but we were in no way ready for 110 or 120 people that we inherited. We were just trying to like basically do mental push-ups to be ready for the team. And then all of a sudden they just got delivered on our doorstep about eight to nine months early. And it was like, what are we gonna do now? And it was just scrambling, you know? And then there's a lot of mistrust right out of the gate because they're like, what have you guys been doing over here? You don't know what game we're making? And we're like, you guys are like early. It was very difficult, but we had to push on, you know? And I think we had to find the positivity out of it and figure out how we can kind of collect everybody again. I think for me it was just that, again, perseverance of coming in here and putting one foot in front of the next to make sure that tomorrow is a good day for everyone. We have been through some pretty tough times here, but we are confident in our foundation and we're building on that. We are in a reset phase with the uh, new studio. <laughs> you know, this probably won't make the final cut, but I like this location. I, I, I prefer this. The new, this, you know, this will all be lovely, but uh, this is, uh, I, I'm fond of this place. It's pretty bittersweet. It's, uh, it's sad in some ways to be leaving the studio. You know, it's such a great place where so many great games are made. This big open collaborative space. We realized we couldn't keep it throughout the whole building and have that same feel, so moving makes sense. It feels like a new chapter. We're making a, you know, a new style of game. Oh. You know, it's it's going to be a good symbolic break and a new beginning. New generation, new facility, new logo, all coming together here and now. And, uh, it starts the future of the business that we so love. Well, the business is growing, and we feel face-to-face -face communication and dialogue is really critical to our collaborative nature. Uh, well, I mean, definitely uh, we'll miss some things uh, about the old building. We went through a lot there, but I think this is a, I feel re-energized, you know, to be honest. I feel like, you know, I just feel pumped up for whatever's gonna be next. The inspiration is definitely in the building now. I mean, we have to step up and make something fantastic because we're in a fantastic place. For me, I wasn't coming to work at Sony. I was coming to work on that franchise. You know, when I played God of War 3, I was so excited about it. I just wanted to be part of that. You know, if you're making a fighting game or a sports game, you build a team around what you need. And we had a team of people who loved God of War and a, and a team of people who want to build that kind of game. You know, honestly, for me, I totally thought that we had to throw it all out and we had to find a new hook for this game, something that could anchor everything that we were doing, but something that could also show that there's some change in all of it. And I'm not as creative as I would love to believe, so I always just pull things directly from my life. So I thought it was a totally clever idea to have Kratos be a dad uh, and try to actually be a dad rather than use it as like a cutaway cinematic to describe whatever past he had. It is such a departure for Kratos when the first thing you talk about is him being a dad, right? And his previous experience with being a dad was, you know, murdering his family. Uh, and that definitely gives people pause. I think the remainder or the rest of the studio, the rest of the team, we had really worked together, this core group of like 11 people to find the best sort of version of what we were talking about. Initially, he wasn't even gonna be his kid. Like, I think the first pitch I gave was that we wouldn't even know what was happening. So it was like Kratos walking through the desert 
because we were in my mind still doing Egypt initially. Uh, wind, sand blowing all over the place as he's kind of crawling through. And then kind of stands up and crests over a dune and checks out this really fantastic, like, this ancient city. And then he kind of turns around and then says, all right, follow me. And then we kind of reveal that there's uh, a kid there. <laughs> we have a long journey ahead. I think it was very little. It just at least got the spark. And then that was the, oh, well, you know, we should do this. We should try this. We should do this. I was all in on some of it. But the sun thing, like, not at first. Definitely not at first. Just mainly because, like, from my perspective, it's like I'm trying to think of, like, combat and what we can do next. And then I see this tiny kid running around Kratos. And I'm like, my god, it's like, he's going to. All he's gonna do is slow him down. All he's gonna do is make things hard, and and nobody wants that in the game. Rolling. You ready to kill a deer? Get your first knife. Yeah. Get in combat. Mm-hmm. Probably do some extra combat stuff. I think you're also gonna jump off of a box into John's arms. So. Where? We just need you to do a backflip. Can you do a backflip? Actually, yes. Really? I'm totally yeah. kidding. You can do a backflip. Yes, I can. Wow. When I first did the audition, I thought it was a movie because it was just like some dialogue right there and I was like, okay, it's just like a movie. And I, we just did like a fire scene or something like that, which I, I, I barely remember. Um, no, we didn't do history today. But you do do that sometimes. Yeah. Basically, when we actually present the game to the executives, this screen will be sitting on the television. It'll just be a, your face sitting at the fire, looping. And I'll be talking to them, and then when we actually start the game, I'll press a button, and that's when you'll hear your dad call you. So I'll press a button, and it'll be like, boy. So it'll be kind of cool. And then I get the role, and then I go to like San Diego or something like that, and then all of that, and I'm like, wait. What? And it's like a game, and it's God of War, and I'm like, what? And I'm like super excited, but I was like really confused. And it was just a bunch of emotions going through me. It doesn't go on Facebook, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or the internet. <laughs> yeah, I think Sunny wins that round, for sure. So what do you got? You gotta go like here? Yeah. Just... You're just gonna, that's, that's how you do it? Yeah. Okay, right into the belly? Or this? <laughs> yeah, 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 I actually did that yesterday, where I'm supposed to get really mad at Kratos. Like, anger. Gah! More. More? More. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> ah! Good. Yeah, I had to scream really loud. It's really funny. Okay, Sonny. Loop. Four. What for? So remember, did you just kill that thing? It's not alive anymore. If it's got kids, they're all alone. So think through that. It sucks. Uh. I know, right? Use that. Use that. I can't. The vision for getting that kind of narrative tone, no camera cuts, like get, getting all that stuff up and running, as, especially as well with like a buddy AI with the sun and having him lead the way properly, having him kind of move correctly. And you know, I mean, the vision was so clear, but it was also pretty ambitious. And at that time, we, had, we didn't really have a lot of that working. It was fucking bad. 
it was just a mess, right? It was like 12 different ideas, you know, all at once. It was too much, uh, and nobody was really sort of giving an inch. Okay, well, now what does that mean? Well, that means you go back to the drawing table and you do it again, and you know, we've had even, I think a shoe visit a little while ago in March where the second he left the room, I was like, that was not good. There's something that I, you know, in his facial expression that is telling us there's, there's an issue here. And then, you know, Shannon calls a little while later and says, shoe had some notes. He was not happy, but I don't think I read exactly how unhappy he was. Uh, I was not very uh, perceptive on that one. And it was Carlo who uh, ran into him and Shuhei starts telling him, I was horrified, horrified how bad it was. I think the team, you know, rightfully so, gets nervous when they hear like, oh, Shu's playthrough, you know, was not all positive, right? And people start to say, well, what does this mean? What does this mean? And it means we gotta, we gotta solve this problem, right? Like we do every single day. And like, this is a really big guy in Sony and he did not have a very good experience. And I still was under the impression it was not a very good experience, not horrified horrified how bad it was. I think that he probably walked out of that room that first time going like, what the hell did we do? We just gave this guy a lot of money to make this game. <laughs> did we make a mistake? <laughs> Run far away from me. But you have changed. You're not a monster. The hunt for Kratos was very difficult. We were probably a month away from giving up. We were like that close where everybody started having this pull me aside conversation. And you start thinking about the reality of this. Like maybe this is not gonna happen. Maybe you're not gonna find the perfect person. My agent had called me and, and I wasn't really sold on auditioning for it. I know it sounds silly now. She's like, look, just read it. Just just read the sides. And I read the sides. <clears throat> and I called my agent back. And I said, I thought you said this was a video game. You have seen what I am. And when you lose control, and the rage takes you, that is me in your blood eating away at any goodness your mother may have passed on to you. It was literally like the test you do for a TV series or movie. Run, run far away from me. But you have changed, you're not a monster. That is exactly what I am. Not to me. And it, it just, I, I couldn't wrap my head around how this would be in a video game. Book. Ah, this is not me leading. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Right from the get-go, you can see him and Sonny had a really good chemistry. And, you know, he's huge. Ultra violence and sexism, that's God of War. Why aren't we doing that, right? People will say, Kratos can't grow. He's just this, like, anti-hero who just kills things and bathes in their blood. And I'm like, you need to see a therapist. Uh, but I think it, it, was, it was a necessity. If I had my own instrument, it's probably uh, it's probably the accordion, because it's weird, <laughs> and most people think it's lame, but I think it's cool. Hi, hey, hey, how's it going? How you doing? I remember meeting Corey, and he told me this the story of the game. I, I think we were there for like an hour, an hour and a half, and I felt like I was sitting around a campfire, like I wanted to just like roast marshmallows and just like, and then what happened? It's the story that draws me musically. That's where I get ideas. And I realize like this game has a really well thought out 
story and character arc, and I just thought, I, I have to be involved in this. What is God of War? Is Kratos the mask god, or is Greek mythology the mask god? I was talking to several people from the European marketing groups, because I think what they saw is like, oh, you're just gonna make another God of War with angry Kratos, right? And they're like, that's just not a good idea. And I, I talked about, you know, potentially exploring other mythologies, and uh, one of the guys had said, you know, I just don't understand how that would work. You know, what is Kratos gonna uh, pop on a backpack and just walk to Scandinavia? You know, that just seems weird. Uh, and, and I was like, oh, right at that time I realized, like, I was like, oh, well, he doesn't have a backpack, but yeah. <laughs> Hello, okay, wow, there we go. So they're gonna go out in the beginning of the game and fulfill the sort of dying wish of the mother. The mother wanted her ashes, she wanted to be burned and her ashes to be spread on the highest peak in all the realms. So that's kind of the driving force throughout the entire story is that they are taking her ashes and heading to the highest peak. The overall theme of this is that the kid is gonna teach Kratos how to be a human, Kratos is gonna teach the kid how to be a god, right? Each of them has a piece of them missing and they kind of help each other out on this buddy road trip movie. We are in the middle of nowhere right now. And we hear a hissing. There's the culprit. So, another adventure. Yeah, that was, it was interesting, a cross section of people too, because it was, uh, we sent programmers, uh, artists, uh, Shannon, I think, went as well. It's a panorama? You're doing a film. This is, this is serious. I'm documenting. You're documenting? Ready, guys? Right. We're getting ready. This is where it all begins. Cue the soundtrack. Well, we made it to uh, New York so far. We're halfway there. You can see the people were much smaller back then. Luke would have been a giant compared to them. That's the way we dress when going to Reykjavik. Smartly. Yeah, Great. <laughs> Nordic thunder. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna get run over. This blood's still too HDR shimmering. Top of fishing video. Iceberg ahead. So we're still here. The tires won't come off, so we called the farmer. So we gotta dig in here. Yeah. This is where we live now. Uh, come find us. There's so much life uh, that's happening around you, and you can feel it almost in, in the terrain. There was a number of really special moments there for me because of how magical the landscape is and the way that it just captures your soul. As I was looking around at the beauty of Iceland for the first time, it really hit me that the path that we were on was the right path. I could see the game for the first time truly in my heart. The Icelandic language today is the closest language to Old Norse. What that means is a choir in Iceland would be able to read a phonetic spelling of Old Norse and do it correctly. So immediately all eyes were on Iceland as a possible place to do choir. <laughs>
I thought I was auditioning for Game of Thrones, I'm gonna be honest. I was pulling on a major Lady Stark moment with my monologue, and I was like, this is my moment. Everybody, <laughs> we're all in. It felt like a beautiful cinematic piece about father and son and mother and longing and relationships and, and with these gods and goddesses, and it was really exciting. So they're going to meet Freya in a, in a, in a meet-cute, really. Uh, she is going to give them a little bit more information on the world, help guide them to where they need to go, but also kind of start to create this relationship with both Kratos and the sun uh, that we kind of build throughout the entire game. Uh, she will send them off towards the mountain, and you get attacked, like, right away. She's totally not trying to screw you over and just sending you into a really bad place. Uh, it's just, it's a very hostile world that you're in. The gunfire is very exciting. It's all part of the experience. Uh, so while we may not end up doing some of these exact things, I think it's cool to kind of get the tactical feel of these things so that we can kind of imagine a little bit of what it was like to live like people in the pre-Viking era. Wait, they have guns and we have knives? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Survival. Ow. Watch for poison oak! Stop saying that. <laughs> 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 Taking you in the woods is like Woody Allen in here. You're paying attention to your task, but you'd also be paying attention to your perimeter. There'd always be someone watching. I don't see anyone. Like a creepy camera guy. <laughs> I know. But whatever you do, you have to make sure you can get into it and then still close it up and keep yourself insulated. Son. Is it not sitting in yet? Oh, he'll fit. <laughs> One way or another. <laughs> Something else you're looking for is to make sure that you don't have any Widowmakers, things that can fall and kill you. Yeah, come help. You can do it. Uh, I'll, I'll see if Sonny wants to do it. If not, don't do it. Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. Great. You want to help with the rest of it? Done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so I will call playback. Okay. Holy crap, this is exciting. Audio? Camera. This is our first day. I have to pee. Really? <laughs> now? Do not make me pull this volume over. <laughs> I won't, I won't. <laughs> I often make bad decisions and get myself in trouble, so it'll be perfect. I'll be like, look, what did you expect? Are you talking about work too? Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> it's uh, all around. TV? TV? <laughs> yes, I was trying to I'm teaching him the action. All right. It's a big influencing factor. And I think as I was growing up in the earlier games, the family was sort of the individual extended family. My family lived farther away from me, so I was a lot more separated from them. So the work family became the entire family. Now, I have them intermixing. Like, I had my daughter during production, and just the the willingness to work around my schedule of having a newborn. And, <laughs> you know, I had to take maternity leave in the middle of production and, well, I know, so I came back. I have two daughters and a four-year-old and six-year-old. Uh, hi, Sophia, hi, Olivia. Unexpected, yes. Yeah. Uh, it'll ring, it'll ring. Um, We're gonna watch the TV and they're gonna be acting over there. And then it's gonna be on the TV. TV? Yes, TV. Even in the earlier games, that's how I kind of rooted myself in the first story, was writing the first few drafts with my dad and kind of finding the struggle of Kratos and Zeus, the sort of father-son story. But this father-son story is told from that different angle, the son becoming the father. So I am a little OCD, so I'm going to take some of this. Oh, you like that? Okay, good. 
Oh, that's fantastic. I don't know why. I'm taking a little bit of this. Not certain what I'm gonna do with it yet. Farting is allowed in the volume. Right. <laughs> Only in the volume. <laughs> if you need to fart, go next door. Yes. was playing around with just this melody. And at the last minute, I was like. It's so simple that I almost wrote it by accident. It was the last thing I did in sketching that theme. But I mean, I've come to really love it. And it's, I think its simplicity is, is what makes it so powerful. And, and it represents. Kratos. He's a man of few words. His theme should be a theme of few notes. Here we go. Huh? Kratos isn't the most verbal guy. It's not that he's not intelligent, because he was a general. He was very intelligent, but he's very efficient with what he says and, and when he feels like something needs to be said. And so with Kratos, it's like, when a grunt can do, that's that's kind of his wheelhouse. Because <laughs> he can convey a lot of emotion from kind of thing. That was good. It's really good. Sometimes I will on set be referencing him, what is this one again? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's phenomenal. E3 is a big opportunity for media to get a glimpse into what's going on with the various software as well as hardware. It's bigger than Oscar night. I mean, it's huge. It's a chance where you, you get all these, you get all developers, you get all studios, you, everyone's just a fan of games. I drove around for an hour looking for a parking space. I had forgotten how fantastic E3 is. Fuck that. I'm looking forward to seeing people's responses back to this thing. Right now, I haven't heard anything, but seeing the crowds is definitely an inspiring thing. Hello. This is the first of many diaries that I'm going to make during the soul-crushing process of making this game. I haven't, it's been three years on this project. We are a month from our E3 demo alpha, which is the first E3 demo we're ever gonna do. The art director, who's been on the project from the beginning and actually been at Sony for over 10 years, is having his last day today, which is the reason I'm probably starting to do these things. Um, so that I can outwardly seem like I'm totally fucking fine with it, but inwardly then I can be completely questioning what the fuck is going to happen? Can <laughs> <laughs> we crank this free to work out? Because this is. It's already, uh, <laughs> what is it at? 11. <laughs> <laughs> 11. Check. <laughs> oh, that dull hammer doesn't scare me. Oh, oh no! Boy! <laughs> <laughs> Boy! What's that, Thor? Your mother's knife. It belongs to you now. What for? A test. So being like two weeks away from E3, you know, we haven't really talked about or shown anything about our game. So like, it's like a pressure cooker right now. You know, we're like all boiling with excitement. It is simply the target. Clear your mind. Immediately when we show the E3 demo, you're gonna see a lot of introduction of story elements that weren't in these games before. And I know that, you know, some fans may have liked the just pure, like just, just kill, 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 fight, fight, fight. Yeah. yeah. 
well, I don't know uh, how they will react, but I'm excited about <laughs> finding out <laughs> soon. <laughs> Like everybody's probably a little tired, a little stressed, a little freaked out. You know, this is the first time after a very long time we're gonna show anything to the world. So I hope people are just happy to see the change. Oh man. So I literally, I think I've been rehearsing that demo for uh, a month. And it's just nine minutes, but it's to me the most important nine minutes of this game. Because that's the one where either everybody's gonna go, what the fuck are you doing? Or, what the fuck are you doing? That's awesome! Like, I have no idea what answer is gonna be either. It truly is like the cat is alive and dead at the same time right now. Ah, I like that. Wait, was it the audience? <laughs> no, I'm gonna picture myself naked. <laughs> Do you want to say bye bye to Papa? He wants to open that door. <laughs> Come on, give Papa a big hug. Oh. Yeah. We've seen so much in the last 20 minutes. And we haven't even started. I know. So many exclusives, so much more to come. I'm, I'm excited to be surprised. I don't know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. I will try not to screw up. Uh, all right. I love you. Mwah. I love you. I love you. Papa Bush. Mwah. All right. You have a good day opening and closing doors. Uh, good afternoon. In here, fantastic. Hold. My wife talks about she doesn't come home from work being a stay-at-home parent. She's constantly immersed in work. And I'm like, I kind of feel the same way, and I should be able to separate from it, but I have this like problem where it won't, my brain will not disengage. It was last night, it was three in the morning, and I'm like, I really need to sleep. I have to sleep, and I just could not stop tossing and turning and... What are you doing? Going over both the positive and negative scenarios, you know, and one of them was trying to convince myself, you know, the positive scenario, and the other one was just worming its way in, like an earworm, you know, like... They're all gonna laugh at you. Maybe not that exactly, but. Hi, 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 everyone. Oh my God, thank you, thank you. That's so awesome. When I saw it yesterday, I was with Corey and Yumi and Kevin, and I said, you guys are just so close to this that you don't see how absolutely phenomenal it is, and it's just mind-boggling. They could very much say, wow, that's great. This is a new direction. You know, gamers, I feel, have grown up the way that I have grown and the team has grown. We've all kind of moved to this next phase of gaming. Kyle, you excited about today's press conference? I have no idea how people are going to respond. Anything that anybody could say on the internet is still tame compared to what goes on inside here. But now there's so many more people at stake. It's a team. I don't want to let them down. I think there's nothing we can do now. It's already done, so I have faith that people are going to enjoy this. 
and then I won't have faith, and I will have faith, and I won't have faith, and I'll just... <laughs> and Yumi. You should get footage of them. Shannon and Yumi. There you go. Get in there. There you go. Get up in there, right in Yumi's face. No one wants to watch you tape them. They want to look at you. All right, so this is the bonus. Crazy day, Corey Marlong on the big stage. It's like four years in the making. Yeah. Woohoo! So, in terms of going in, um, Yumi wants the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done with the camera. Patience again, free press conference. Absolutely. Now the big show starts in just a few minutes. See, now I can leak something, and it will be okay because today's the day that the leak's coming out. How are you getting in? I have no idea. Is that a hat? Huh? Have like a hat, a, a cap, or anything? You could not wear anything that identifies you as Santa Monica Studio. You can't talk about the studio when we were there. It was crazy. Oh, good point. I didn't really think of it that way. Yeah, I'll put this on. I have a hoodie. I can go Unabomber style. I think this is more for me, thinking that anyone would know who I am. <laughs> and what a world we live in when I think that. on one side of me and I had some random stranger on the other side of me. I want to lean over and be like, I know what I know what this is. I know what this is. Doesn't scare me. Oh, oh no! Boy. Stop, stop. Boy. Your mother's knife. It belongs to you now. What for? A test. She taught you to hunt, yes? Yes, sir. Then show me what you know. I am hunting. Yeah! Yeah! Feed us. That was straight up paralyzing. I, w I was literally paralyzed, full chills. Entire body. Then show me what you know. I am hungry. Oh, ho, ho, whoa, 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 hold, hold up, hold up. Oh! 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 What the? No, no. Oh! 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 Yeah! I, I literally got to like raise my arms and hear that sound as he stepped out. I am hungry. I get chills even thinking about it. 
It was truly a, a once in a lifetime experience. Very rarely in life do you get, do you get that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> feed us. <laughs> you know, <it's> like <laughs> Great Tahoe's got a fucking walk out. Oh my god. <gasps> Some of my friends are like, like, yeah, yeah, but also kind of like jealous at the same time. And then like some of my friends are like really happy for me, like, bro, like I saw you in like God of War trailer. It was like so crazy. And they're like freaking out. And I was like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. That is awesome. Oh my god! Oh. Holy shit! What am I hunting? You are hunting deer. No, it, but what is Kratos doing in a Viking style game? Which way? Your hunt. You tell me. Kratos on the next! <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no, they didn't. No, no, no. Fuck, gameplay. Which was incredibly ambitious, right? Corey's going to play the game while we perform the score live to the gameplay, not a pre-rendered video. Nah, Brett. Nah, nah, son. Oh, my God, they're actually going into the gameplay. It was section to section, like, worrying to some degree about just how it will play. Punch him in the fucking face, son. Holy shit! Will Corey hit it? Will he get the mantle? Will the sun move the way we want him to move? It looks gorgeous. It looks amazing. Oh my god, what is going on right now? And we were literally going section to section. Like, we'd be like, and then Andrew and I would be like, yeah. <laughs> whoa! What the whoa! What is this? This is the best game so far that have ever been shown at E3. And that's just this little tiny piece of what this game is going to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. The team really got together and really delivered on something that is very hard to do. Woo, this game is going to be good. This game is going to be so fucking good. Now, you are ready. For what? A new beginning. Yo, dragons! Dude, I get it. I get it right now. Sean Layden. Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. What a way to start the show, huh? The live demo of God of War. Or is it in the back hole? There's no one. Okay, well, that's good. It's recording. As he's walking towards his uh, office area. Damn. Damn. Everybody's telling me, my gut is telling me, what we did on E3 doesn't scale, right? We took so much time out of the project to make that awesome. That doesn't scale to a full-sized game. You know, but the scary thing was, like, we showed 10 minutes and 45 seconds or something, and it took a year and a half to get there. And now we have a year and a half left, essentially, and we have, like, 30 hours to make. And you're kind of scratching your head, like, how is that humanly possible? How are you skipping the, to all those different stages? Are you using bookmarks? Is no. This, it's called Denny. So yeah, this is actually this is Denny actually team. not correct anymore. It's unbelievable. No, uh, I can't keep up with all this shit. <laughs> Anything we have to say, we usually say it. So, and I think that's what makes the team work. You know, you don't settle for crap that you see. You 
If you see crap, then you identify it and you say it right to the person's face, hopefully with fists and a bat in your hand to make sure that they change it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, basically you just talk it out and you just figure out like how to make it better, because usually it gets better. Yeah, we just gonna do it in the back and just a little swap. Funny is this very. We can definitely issue. make her disappear. Exactly no, I know, know we can warp her. Whether, whether we can make her turn into a bird in gameplay. I love to see that. <laughs> yeah, me too. He's a good meeting. All right, guys. Never mind. I gotta go do something. Yeah, he's got things. Hey. Why, apparently. Good morning. All right, I'm going this way. Yeah. All right. Everyone will steal your soul. <laughs> I have almost 30 people in, in my department, and artists tend to be a little bit. Um, introverted, dramatic, read into things, very sensitive, because, you know, you're an artist. That's uh, that's natural. It's all OK. But every single person that I need to deal with needs to be dealt with in a different way. I, like, um, if everything goes right, uh, then uh, I feel that I can get all of the stuff in. But as you can see, like, I, I was just yeah. showing you stuff, and it's a bunch of We're stuff. We're going to leave coming. now, because everything's going wrong. For me, at least, I think a big part of it is, is maintaining that focus. With a team of our size, the ideas are constantly flowing. There's so much feedback. There's so many things that need to be done. Sometimes you just want to, you know, get go to each individual person and say, stop thinking, just do this, right? Like, don't look at all these other things. Just look at this and do this. And you can't do that because you know the other things are also pretty valuable. Which would simulate that if you come to it at exactly the wrong phase, that's what would happen. happen. Right. So I, I'll try. I'll try switching that to true and see if that fixes it in that case, or see if it just has him like... Go straight in a line, yeah. 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 And if that's the case, then check it in? Well, let me know. OK, cool. Cool, thanks. But then the opposite's true as well, right? Because I remember, like, you and I had many fights about how, like, the Draga reveal should work. And eventually, it just came down to, like, I have a plan for this. Leave me alone. I've got an idea here. Go away. Translating the room, digging up the thing, so... It's a struggle. <laughs> to, to try to sort of unlock like this this understanding of the process and how all the pieces fit together and how the players are going to understand the final product that you're delivering. Are you more, like, more on that? Are you pushing well, further bugs. on these? There's bugs. there's bugs like you saw, like the, the fact that that one resource didn't was missing the ID. There's tons, there's this tons is, of stuff. This is showing right now on the purchase. So it's clean up. Like, probably the most challenging thing is just people love this character so much and, and there is a lot of pressure to make sure that those people feel like we're doing that character who's so important to them justice while still evolving him because he couldn't stay in the one place that he was and right now once you go in there and you have all the root the doors around you you don't know how the hell to get back out to the bridge right now the only doors that are in there lead to realms right Oh my god, your AI broke. Yes. I had a firmware update just now. <laughs> Sincerely, like after a party that just appeared in your house, because now I feel like I just want to show up every once in a while and leave you new lawn ornaments. Yes, I'm not kidding. Oh, I'm going to do that. That sounds fun. They are a practical joking bunch, the managers. Weirdly, that was the inspiration yeah. for Freya's house. Oh my god, that's what it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Look! It's all right. Is he friendly? So this is going to start filling in all the points in which we meet you, and you're going to be going with Kratos and the Sun to take them from the mountain all the way to Alfheim, right. when you meet them in your house, all the different circumstances throughout the game, yeah. uh, where we need actually your voice versus my voice or Carlo's voice, uh, okay. you know, where you have really bad stand-in dialogue right now. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we doing? So this Lamb's Crest. So these first two lines here, at this point now, the player can still roam around your house. Oh, right, and I'm and like, it... come on, get it already. I also need Lamb's Crest, do you mind? It's a white petal flower in my garden. Just a handful. Where you better work, Chris. Fine. Lamb's Chris. <laughs> I'm a fucking god of war. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I hope you guys keep that in there. What's up, Larry? We're trying to hit Alpha. Uh, it's like a. What up? It's like a big deadline for our game. You so. know? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. What you what you a big time motherfucker now because you <laughs> <in the> movies <laughs> and shit? <laughs> Save some of that money, dog. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Who, who are you working with? Uh, Nicole Kidman, Colin Farrell. Oh, good. So nobody bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> have you missed me? No, not really. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> Come on, man. It's okay. It's it's okay to love, dog. You gotta, you know. Don't forget that. It's okay to love. Love is first. Followed closely by hate and divorce and alimony. <laughs> Those are the things we teach kids on set. Yours, where? Yeah, let's do this. Where is that? It's in the pit. It's in the pit. That's uh, awesome. Well, I mean, we can show you stuff without Jason. Yeah, that's true. We don't need him, right? How deep can your voice go? Pretty deep. Okay, good. You're playing Jason today. Great. So do we think the plan is to always have, like, the word Valkyrie written behind her, just it so helps. you're clear? Yeah. That's awesome. That was your vision, right? It, it was. I just didn't realize that you guys were able to really <laughs> achieve it. Jason. Jason, I did a terrible. What are your thoughts on the, the, the Valkyrie? The Valkyrie? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't looked at the Valkyrie yet, so I don't know. I hear it's awesome. It is pretty awesome. I would not want to be the character following this meeting. <laughs> I don't want to be the next character. That's what we're not going to Boy, show oh boy. No. The bar has been set, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Now I don't know who to throw under the <laughs> right. bus. Now you got a top Valkyrie uh, and David. final boss. <laughs> <laughs> No pressure. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some work in progress stuff. I'm actually the first, so I've heard I'm the first woman in the combat design team at the studio ever in the history of the studio. And when I heard that, I went, oh, <laughs> you know, that's that's actually really cool. That's that's not scary. It's cool. Yeah. However you want to start. It's your, it's your meeting. Maybe, okay. maybe you go. Uh, so this is the witch. I think my generation, there was definitely a lot less women in video games, but when I see the younger generation, there's a much larger portion of the people applying in that are women now. <laughs> Yeah, she's in the you, perfect height. If my hand wasn't sure. there, you would have hit me in the nuts. She was like karate, Good, you man. deserve it. <laughs> in, in, in their defense, you do deserve it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, 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 I can't really disagree. In his him. defense, he can't help it. What we're concerned about right now is just getting in the, the arena, and it looks, looks good. Yeah, the arena is And these there. waves are not going to throw off combat at all. Apparently not. not. I said. <laughs> so he will be meeting probably like a couple more times in terms of just brainstorming meetings, okay. idea meetings. They're trying to schedule something for a half hour and a half over lunches. Okay. So Shannon's going to be organizing that and be letting you know. But I think okay. for her, it's a priority. Obviously, it can't step over any project meeting. Yeah, because we have a okay. Yeah, apparently our project meeting is so important. Just kidding. There is just no way that this type of activity happens from any type of top-down endeavor. It is no, not at all. every single person every day, right? Yeah. Kind of figuring it out, and and it's like again, like with your kids, you kind of give them, equip them in the best way that you can, and then you, you sort of you got to solve it yourself. And for that freedom, you'll be accountable to it. My mother said, "Everyone is smarter than you in something." And if you don't figure out what it is and learn from it, that's your fault. You know, er she taught me that every person I meet will have worth. And it's my duty to, to be open to, to receiving what people have to offer. You know, don't discount anyone. Do we have information on all of these playtesters? They are giving us nothing on their faces. Well, she's sort of, I think, in a resting happy face. She just seems <laughs> happy the whole time, but everyone else is just like, thank God I'm getting 10 bucks. I started in this industry. I always shudder when I say this, but I started in 1989. Um, as a game tester at Sega. 
And when I finished school, I had no idea that they pay people to test games. Uh, Jason is gonna give you a cool Sweet. presentation to break down all the combat, and then we're gonna let you play through. Awesome. Uh, like I said, we are making incredible progress. I am very surprised at how fast everybody seemed to pick up the controls. Like, they seem to just adjust to it very quickly. It's almost like they could be good. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot to study, which is good, also. Yeah. There's only a couple things on here. But, you know, pick up and play. Addictive. That's, That's how we thing. roll. Yeah. What? Sorry, this is my uh, <laughs> director. She is actually guiding you, me through this entire You mean it's like you're already four and a half minutes off right. schedule. <laughs> Get on yeah, schedule. No. It's amazing. Right. Thank you, Yumi. I will stay on this. That's true. She could be smiling beneath the frame. I'm going to go with I believe she's smiling beneath the frame. Can you get me a larger uh, monitor? I'm not sure. Yeah, this is a little, little small. This is not the executive monitor we normally have, so you'll have to slum it like the rest of us. Is he trying to hit the kid? <laughs> he is! He's trying to punch. He's good at killing. <laughs> what are your predictions? Do you think they're going to give it really good scores, really bad scores? With that, the lack of facial expression, I can't tell where any of them are at. If they are enjoying it, or if they're bored. I just see Derek. Derek, he just looks so professional. So what did you guys think about the sun? Was it useful, not useful? Yeah. Very useful. Yeah. We electrocuted guys. Without that, it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not a blocker in God of War. Never have been. Is that the old way, where if you just keep doing the combo and they've chosen a block, they will just keep blocking just until blocking. you stop? Yeah, they will never stop yeah. until you either block break them. They're like the Terminator blocks. And I don't want to babysit someone. That's the, the whole fun of being Kratos, is running through and, and mercilessly <laughs> murdering people yeah. with fist weapons and hammers. Yeah, we just have to make sure we're in agreement of like, OK, these are the, the possibilities. And what are we in agreement? Yeah. But I don't know. We never talked about it. So. What do you think? That's the most satisfying thing when they dodge my attack. It's just not something I'm used to. Oh, yeah, turn it off, turn it off. My question is, why didn't the sun ever get attacked? Because someone's just kind of like, hey, I'm here. I'm like your OP, like, freezer. Yeah. OP freezer? Yeah. <laughs> the fuck is that? Yeah, like, it was helpful, but... Mir? What is this? What is this craziness? Yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely on the OP side, but it's fun. I did not know what that meant. Yes, true. Going to play this, I was really, really OP for me. So like, it felt really like I didn't even have to pay attention to him, and he was just kind of like a fairy sitting on my shoulder, like, <laughs> shooting stunning arrows, and it was really overpowered, and it felt really cheap. With the addition of, like, the sun, kind of felt very cosmetic, because I feel like you could have, like, the same ability without the sun even being there. Sure. And so I feel like if, like, the sun was supposed to be, like, an integral part of, like, the game, then, like, he should have a role, and, like, the player should always be, like, actively aware of that, like, as, like, a liability, or, like, maybe, This is the all or nothing. It's everything. Like, we are literally all in on this game. You have to get 150 people who are very stubborn and passionate and creative to all see a similar picture that doesn't exist. And doubt is the demon that lives in the ear of every person in this industry. That is, to me, the biggest obstacle, keeping everyone focused on the goal and not listening to that little demon in their ear that says, they're all going to laugh at you and it's not going to work, right? And it's like, I have the exact same thing in both ears constantly, but I'm still trying to steer people back. And, you know, you have to be able to trust each other that you can fail and openly fail together and still recover. Right? Otherwise, everybody just starts protecting what they're doing and nobody wants to share anything. A lot of what we're doing is not simply throwing every single thing out. It's looking at the DNA of what God of War is and finding out the mountain we had to climb to kind of change this franchise.
it is the traditional sort of child coming of age, but it's also Kratos kind of coming of age. The idea of Kratos being a closet human being, right? Somebody who hides his humanity, somebody who is shunned and uh, run away from it. So we've always kind of kept it a little bit open just to allow people to freely play with it. But now we're going to start really honing in on forcing people to have to use the sun to create opportunities. I see rooms there. It reads, sacrifice your arms to the center of the water. Awaken again the cradle of the world. What? Throw our weapons into the water? That is the lead-in to the whole World Serpent coming out. So that way, at least it shows, hey, look, he's saying be a warrior, everyone's a bad guy. And then when you meet this World Serpent, the thing in the whole God of War universe that always would seem like the bad guy is the one thing that the kid says, hey, this is actually the good guy. I think everybody recognizes we get one shot. We screw this up, I don't see us making another one. You know, it's, it's a massive bet. No pressure. It's an interesting approach because in the last ones, you know, how he killed his family. And in this one, he's actually got something left, so it might be interesting how they use him. Uh, I think it looks like a badass I, don't know how I love him here after he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. He's still badass. So being from Norway, does, does it seem legit? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I don't know yet, I haven't got any hands on time, so it looks nice, but until I get to play it, I don't know. I wanna first start by welcoming all of you guys to the God of War behind the curtain panel. Hello everyone, I'm Corey Barlog. Uh, I'm the director of the game and I make their lives completely miserable uh, on a daily basis. Uh, that's really it, that's the best description. <laughs> tabs, you tab over to the journal. Then you would have- When you're tabbing. Yep. You could tap you fast, right? Like, yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's What's happening on screen while I'm tabbing? It's staying on the current screen until we make the selection and stop tabbing, and then what so happens? Currently, uh, just by moving over to this, that's, there's no like com confirm input to go to it. So yes. currently, as you, as you tab over, you instantaneously bring this UI screen up. So when I tab, 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 it instantaneously moves? Yeah. We have an in-game part of that, Corey. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we can look at it literally right now. Literally. Yep. Not figuratively. No, this is, you're just trying to trick me and have me not see these. All right, well, let's get to it because we have a lot of questions going on. Um, you know, this is a big reimagining of God of War. So I think my first question really would be for Shannon. You guys were, I guess the fairest way to say it is that at a crossroads a couple years ago for the studio. You know, as we were kind of at that crossroads, it was really apparent to me that we needed to really look for a new beginning and someone that could tell that new beginning in a way that um, you Sorry, problems? So here we need a face of black uh, for the duration of this. Well, we need an, an action that blacks out the screen, so we're not going to face the black. Well, the action is the hand coming over. Right. Yeah. But it's not going to look like a face of black. Right? Well, we're going to try to make it look like a face of black. Right? I realized that, that when I made the, the first and second game, I was a very different person than I am today. Uh, I'm a bigger asshole today than I was then. Uh, growth, people. It's fantastic. Are we sure about the size of this arena? That's a big art scope. Just That's throw it out there. How much work have been? We should have been noted long ago. Weeks and weeks and weeks. We've been looking at multiple times. What's the problem? What's the real problem? I'm just asking, do you think this arena is the right time? It helps to work with absolutely great people. I am surrounded by people that are so much better than me. It would be nice to have this effect. It would be nice to have this breakable. It would be nice to have this and that. And it's like, dude, 10 days away from beta lock. It's, it's been tough. It's been tough the last, you know, few years. It's never easy balancing all these personalities and all this talent. If you guys think it's not a problem, then it's not a problem. That's why I formed it as a question. I'm asking them about you. 
Okay. I mean, I, it, I know, it, it, it's definitely not a problem. Okay. Every story that you tell, everything that you make, you have to have some kind of personal connection to it, some kind of truth that comes from your own life. Right now, this is a giant empty space that doesn't have anything in the ways of interaction or change. We've changed everything from the combat to the mechanics to including the sun to the environment to everything is, is different, new, and fresh. It's scary. And scary. Needs to be locked it down. Yeah. Move it forward, lock right. it down. Move it forward, lock it down as a leader. I find myself sometimes terrified at the decisions that we're making. We, we made the choice. We gotta figure out how to make that shit work. You have something that fans really care about and players really care about, but we still wanna flip everything, break it apart, and then start putting it back together slowly. You know, we bump in together every once in a while. Sure. But it's it's all for the good of the ultimate goal of uh, greatness. I'm so thankful every single day that they're the ones that have to do the hard work. Those guys are busting their ass. But like, we brought this dude on, we passed on other people to bring that guy on. So I don't want any more fucking excuses from that guy. I just want to get shit done. And I just want to thank Corey, Ariel, G, and Shannon for joining us today on the God of War behind the curtain panel. Or yeah, you guys it, it fell through the cracks on that one. I feel like this this whole time we were supposed to have you play the game, but you haven't played the game. Right. What would be great is if we boot this up and it doesn't work. Now I'm very excited. I, I, I want to try that out. So, 391.95. I have no idea what that means. I'm able to now share with you guys the specific release date. Uh, the date we've landed on is March 13th, 2018. This is also going to be 11 years to the day uh, from Corey Barlog's God of War 2 uh, that came out on March 13th, 2007. Up until this point, I think a lot of it has been we have latitude and we have time and we have, we have the ability to tune and think and, and iterate in a way that allows lots of different perspectives. And as that time starts dwindling down, the number of touches you can get to do to validate the decision that you want to make starts sort of going down and down, right? It's, it's risk versus reward, right? We're like, well, there's this issue at the end. If we fix it, man, the payoff is huge, but the risk is super high, so what do you want to do? So the bug is you're invulnerable. And so what'll happen is you can kind of walk into the trap, and then bad things, really bad things, start happening. So yesterday I was in the middle of taking a bunch of. Oh, that's awesome! Look at that. Fuck. There's no reason at this phase that the log should just be walking on its own. It's the magic log right there. So currently we have about 3,878 total bugs in the database. We're supposed to be at zero bugs right now. That was our goal. And we're here in the state where we still have quite a lot of bugs open. This is a perfect example of the bizarre shit happening that the kids face. Well, you don't want to have triplicates of the same bug, so yeah. going through and if anything is called out for your one of your guys' groups, just say, oh, we're already doing this. This is a good example of, like, the average scenario that happens in a day in my life. Seriously? Now I'm looking at the game as a whole going, there's no way we're going to stabilize this. Oh, my god, seriously, can we go out there and settle what the fuck is stops? Uh, I know many of you have been pushing really hard to have been asking people to step up their, uh, their hours, their time spent in the uh, studio. I know people have made some compromises to make this work and to, uh, to bring home the result that the studio needs. So to those of you who have been pushing hard towards these goals, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I think we... Yeah. And I really did believe, I think, four weeks ago that we were on target. We were absolutely no problem going to make the date. Uh, now... All right, so in terms of release date? Yes, yeah, so I need to start to be committed to um, a January 9th sort of status on 
announcing release. I don't know. The scary, scary thing is I really, really don't know. Which means they for more time. What do we do if they say no? We're scared. When you guys were first brought on this thing, uh, do you have any idea what to expect? Father, help me! This scene, uh, this is the first time that uh, the son kills the human being, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty powerful moment. You know, as a, as a father of four children, it's uh, interesting that uh, you know, this, this has been a, a man who has missed 10 years uh, of, of his child growing up. And uh, I, I really found uh, some, some parallels with my own life there um, because I was working on a show and I basically missed 10 years of my kids growing up. So it's, it's just a, it's an interesting dynamic for me. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, clo a little closer to home than, I, than I'd like it to be. <laughs> As two human beings, what, what are the sacrifices that you guys have to go through to protect something like this legacy, to have a secondary family? <laughs> I am, you know, very fortunate in the, in the sense that I have a a home sort of, you know, network and a husband and parents and children that are very, very supportive and uh, very much, you know, uh, are ex as excited about what we're doing here as, you know, I think I am and I have it pretty good. <laughs> so I feel very fortunate. Um, I don't think I want to answer this right now. What does this goal mean to you? It's everything. Follow me. Why help us? Maybe I see more of myself in you than I'm willing to admit. Maybe. Maybe by helping you, I'll make up for a lifetime of mistakes. Or maybe I just like you. I mean, there's lots of different methodologies on, on how to be vulnerable in a scene or how to be connected to an emotional scene where your son is basically saying, you ruined my life, I hate you, I never want to see you again. <laughs> it was right around the time of um, uh, I was going through a divorce, so that wasn't difficult for me to be in a space that was uh, vulnerable and fractured and confused. Like, it wasn't supposed to turn out this way. It's my job as an actress to um, keep myself in that space of like um, being permeable and being affected by what's happening in the moment. And so if I can recall what those feelings were like with my ex-husband, then I can uh, understand some of the pain that Freya's going through with um, someone that she, she loved and had the best intentions for, but who it's, it's just not, it's not going the way that she had hoped. If I had, if it hadn't been that, it could have been anything else in my life where there was a goodbye from someone that, you know, abandonment issues. I mean, we, you know, come on, we're human. We're all, we, we've all got our bag of, of pain. Oh, that, okay, we'll use that one. <laughs> Oh, just one little marker. 
Who needs my pinky? Oh, his pinky, too. You know, I, I think as an actor, you always want to feel safe. You always want to... Because when you, when you do choose to do that, you can't bring yourself out of it. It takes some decompression. The scene when I go back and get the Blades of Chaos. It was probably not, not real early on, but early on in the filming. And that's kind of what I was like, do I want to go there? Because this, this was a moment. If, if I was going to take the scab off it as a person, as a human being, this is where it is. There's nowhere you can hide, Spartan. Put as much distance between you and the truth as you want. It changes nothing. Pretend to be everything you are not. Teacher. Husband. Father. But there is one unavoidable truth you will never escape. <laughs> You cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. A, a lot of this performance, for me, is a love letter to my kids. It's and, and it's and it's an apology. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> you want a minute? No, let's. <clears throat> you got to switch on the video? Mm -hmm. I just switched. You need to switch. Let's stop for a second. Fuck me, man. I could see it in everybody's eyes that they were just like, we're not gonna make it. And then everyone's still treating it like, hmm, you know what? We'll just see. And I'm like, no, like, I, in my mind, I get it. I see what you guys are telling me. I'm not gonna let myself believe we're gonna make the date now. Now I'm just gonna try to adjust to the April. That, uh, that, that changes, uh, well, that means you're not going uh, to Europe next month. No. But February, like that. Yes, it means next month is very hard. But four years of a marathon, you don't want to stop running in the last 200 feet. You know, for many years, you don't see, or at least I didn't see, what a sacrifice was until you start sort of living the sacrifice. Um, you start feeling the sacrifice, if that makes any sense. We as working parents always wonder and question, do we really spend enough time with our children? I carry that with me every day, and um, I never have the right answer. Um, I All I can do is be the best I can be in those moments that I do have my children and um, that I'm really able to engage, and hopefully the stresses of the job I'll, you know, don't get in the way of me being the best parent that I can be. Hey, Asad. Hey, how you doing? Happy New Year. Are we still in that phase? I Happy know. New Year phase? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, and just update you on just the date uh, discussion. So right now, the earliest the IT folks and the sales people feel comfortable with is the 20th, which is Friday the 20th. We cannot go any earlier because... Yeah, well, quite frankly, Assad, we don't want earlier. 
Um, yeah, no, I think, I think it works for you guys. I think it works for everyone. So at the end of the day, and I keep saying this to everyone, is that at the end of the day, that game comes out, it's going to be amazing. Everyone's going to get bananas, and, and no one's going to remember all the date shit. That's <laughs> right, we just have to actually make it through this period without, without <laughs> keeling over. The industry is incredibly demanding. It is all about what you've done lately, and you need to constantly move forward and do other things. I've always described my career as typical in the industry of having two states. You're either doing everything or you're doing nothing. Um, for me, it's like what being normal is what I struggle with. You know, like taking time off, like why don't we take a vacation or just like any of these things. I, just even saying them, it's like, what am I saying? It's so alien to me. Um, and, uh, and I think it's, you know, I'm feeling it, feeling it. It's time to take the foot off the gas a little bit. Thank you for all your hard work, for serving quality and excellence, even with the entailed personal sacrifice, staying true to the vision, even at points when things felt uncertain. As a team, we're on course to deliver something pretty magnificent. And it's because each and every one of you and the passion you bring every single day. FQA Summit has moved to March 9th. And gold and release to manufacturing moves to March 15th, which pushes the game's release from March 13th to April 20th. Without everybody, we would not be doing any of this crap. It would be me talking to myself in a room. So what we are going to end up with at the end of all this, this amazing game, uh, is truly something that I will carry with me forever. And I believe it is a first step, a first step in many, many games that we're going to make that will, I think, really redefine what this studio is. So I'm very proud to work with everyone here. But thank you. Again, thank you for all your hard work. I know we have still a push ahead of us. Uh, let's go to M620, Epilogue Teaser. We are supposed to be going gold today, so now we're gonna go see if Yumi uh, has any idea of whether or not we're making a disc today. So we're at a point where QA is testing round the clock, getting new issues coming in all the time. You know, everybody on the production side is constantly evaluating what new bugs come in. Hope being that once we end up at the end of the day, we have a solid build that has zero critical issues. You know, that's the one that we're like, yes, we want this to be burnt on a disc. We want to take a picture with it, send it out. This is it. I mean, this is still, the, for me, officially the first game that, uh, you know, I will ship. And I've been here for five years, and it's, you know, it's, it's like a, a big legacy. <laughs> okay, this way. What's going on? I was walking by someone's desk today, and I, I saw something that had been updated. And I was like, wow, that looks amazing. He's like, yeah, this just came in. And I was like, dude, we just have to finish this game. If we finish this game, it will be awesome. Uh, there's so much good stuff. Oh. She's not here. Yumi, you were not here when I stopped by. I am sad. There you go. That way she'll know that someone's looking for her and they're sad. All right, this way. <gasps> well, here she is. <laughs> Yumi Yang, we found her. We just left you a note that said, I am lost without Yumi Yang. All right, this way. Go run, Raph. Run, Raph. This is so exciting. It feels like we're doing something. Oh right my here. gosh, I want to press the button. Which one do I press? How can I screw this up? Just this? That's, That's it? it. That's the whole separate. thing. It just is right. Yep. There it is. Okay. Stand here and watch a progress bar. Yeah. 
it would take a little while. Well, a little while, like how long? Give me an estimate. Um, probably about an hour. Dude, I'm not gonna stand here for an hour. Yeah. That's crazy. A lot of disagreements and a lot of passion went into making this blank disc. For all of you watching, this is how we used to play games back in the 90s. It just, this, is, this is a weird, like, retro experience. It's so analog. Yes. It's beautiful. There's your boy. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, it's actually joined the Tree Preservation Society. Super into trees now. This tree is a metaphor for the franchise of God of War. And at the very beginning of the franchise, we chopped that fucker down so that we could chop it up and then carry it around and then burn it. For me, what I would love to see that from this game, what we're pushing is dramatic context you know, reason, the, the concept of why. Like, why am I here? Why am I doing these things? Why do I care as a player? Like, engaging people on a more emotionally visceral level than just revenge killing, you know, which is great. Combat's fun. It's the way you communicate with the environment in so many games. Uh, but I think it, games that feel repetitive and boring are because there's no strong sense of why. You don't feel connected at all to the world. Broken quiver will slow your draw. Pain we endure. Faulty weaponry we do not. This will do for now. Good? Good. Okay, do you need to say anything for these guys? Who? Documentary people? Yeah. We're on our way to France. And it's wonderful. Corey <laughs> Ballard. <laughs> so you are the first group of people aside from our team to actually get hands-on of the game. Uh, so this is a very exciting moment for all of us. I think that um, what makes a great strong character is absolutely what makes a great strong human because when you're embodying a character, you're embodying the life of a human that is a, some parts of many things within the mind of the writer and they pulled from some person that they know in their life and so it, it, it is a living, breathing thing. Mm. We just got a fantastic historical overview of the city in Berlin for day two of our world tour. For us, this is a very big sort of change for Kratos. Yeah. yeah, there were times when my wife was holding the, the, the camera and FaceTiming a basketball game so I could watch it while I was at some corporate offsite meeting or something like that. You just do what you have to do. You know, we all as a family had to balance. And were there, were there struggles? Were there tears? Of course there was, but that's life. Um, you get through it, and we're all still around, and, and everyone kind of grew from those moments. That was the last. <laughs> all right, let's do this thing. Never played a God of War game, but what's exactly the nature of Kratos? That's a very good question. What is the nature of Kratos? There's an interesting universality to it as well. The idea of even if we don't have kids, we were kids ourselves at one point. Over there, do they call to me? Over do they call to me? So this game, God of War, this iteration is probably the most personal project I think I've worked on in my entire career. You really have gifted God of War and he said, I think I'll ask that for that.
That is the true challenge of parenting, is not to sit there and hide the world from them, but to prepare them, you know. To go through the pain. Yeah, to go through the pain. Find your way home. You are free. And for me, I think as a writer, the most interesting challenge is to take a character that you have made intentionally an anti-hero and actually turn them around. I think a, a difficult thing for anybody is the time you put into it. At the end of the day, we're going to spend nearly four and a half, almost five years on this thing. Five years. Five years, and at the end, you have one thing. And then one day, it's out there, and either everybody loves it, or everyone hates it, or even worse, they're indifferent, and it's just crickets, right? And that's it. Like, it's such feast or famine. We have great jobs, we're not complaining. But there is a sacrifice, you know? And, you know, we would question, like, is this, is this worth it? I'm excited. I'm not sure how he goes from Greek mythology to Norse mythology, but I'm interested to see how it happens. Normally, we know him as an angry, aggressive person, but, I mean, it's, uh, it looks, I think it changes good sometimes, in a sense, you know? I wasn't OK with it until my kid said, Dad, we know. We know why you were working. We know why you missed stuff, you know? I was never OK to it. Something's happening. Smaller. So this right here represents five years worth of work going gold. The incredible team that I worked with, so many people, and then Yumi Yang, the most important person for my sanity throughout this entire crazy journey. By now, I had read through this remarkable adventure. And the one thing I got out of it was this character's love for his son. Oh, look at that. PlayStation Europe. Retweeted. PlayStation, retweeted. Oh, seriously. That's us. The first time we met the world serpent. But how? Art reflects life, reflects art, reflects life. And that's why we have it, so we don't feel so alone. So we see these stories, whether they're folklore, or mythology, made up, or, or real, is because this thing called life is, is interesting and confusing, and it's wonderful, and it's horrible, and it's all these things. Um, and here we are. From the beginning, it was, you know, we have the potential to make a defining game, and. You know, to this day, I say we have the potential to make a defining game. All these drawings. This is our story. OK, I've stalled enough. I'm going hit, to I'm hitting Enter now. Uh, and thank God it's not on the front page, so I could stall just a little bit more. Information is, is not there on the front page of what God of War is yet. Uh, I'm clicking on games now. Holy shit.
Success is not guaranteed. You don't get it just because you are who you are. It's, you get it because you work really crazy hard and sacrifice for something else, you know? You're just kind of, I guess, like a parent. You're gonna sacrifice work really hard and then they're gonna fucking hate you in 15 years and not talk to you for 10 years. And then they're gonna be like, hey, I remember why you were pretty good. This game changes the franchise in a number of huge ways. It's a bold and risky move, one that paid off in spades as one of the greatest games of all time. God of War is a masterful composition of exceptional interlocking parts. Santa Monica Studio is taking us all to Valhalla. Yeah! Uh, there was a lot of fucking doubt on this project, uh, but it was you people uh, every day coming in and doing what you do uh, that made this a reality. The game is a masterpiece. One of the most well thought out and well paced games in quite a long time. Hands down, game of the year. What I want the takeaway to be is like, wow, this was necessary. This was interesting. This was different. This was engaging. This game is just fucking incredible. God of War doesn't just feel like the next step for the franchise, but the entire video game industry. This is how oh, you're so, so Yes, I've been waiting so to tough. do that. We're joined by Corey Barlog. Corey, of course, is the creative director of God of War. The father-son dynamic is obviously... Yeah, I mean, obviously that's the beating heart of the game. I wouldn't say I had any doubts about if we could do it because the talent at the studio is absolutely amazing. And there are people here that won't let this game fail. I consider myself one of them. I do this because I want to make something beautiful and I want, I want everyone to see it. Ah, this game already got me in the feels. How did that even happen? Kratos is back! <laughs> All right, and the game award for game of the year goes to God of War. I want to thank my children and all of the families throughout the God of War team. And you guys, the fans around the world, together we all dream big dreams. Thank you, everyone. So the amazing thing is, for everybody at home, this is how easy it is to make games. Just walk around the studio, you hit a button once, and the game is finished. It's like that, that scene in Spaceballs. Instant video cassettes. They're out in stores before the movie is finished. <laughs>